So here we have a Renault Kangoo electric van and in this video I'm just going to show you what you do if you come up to it and you find it won't unlock or start. So this particular van is the 33 kilowatt hour model. The same will apply to the previous generation with the uh, 22 kilowatt hour battery pack and actually this video will apply to the new Kangoo E-Tech with the 44 kilowatt hour pack but I haven't yet seen one of those vans. So if you come to your van in the morning and push the unlock button and nothing is happening then basically a battery has gone flat and because it's electric a lot of people instantly worry about the traction battery underneath but that would not be the case. So if your central locking isn't working it will either be the coin battery in your key which has gone flat or probably most likely it's the 12 volt battery under the bonnet which has gone flat. So all you need to do to get in the van is use the key blade but because these are French they don't have a lock on the driver's side on the UK vehicles you've got to go around to the passenger door and here's your old lock, unlock the van manually and then you can get in and at this point you can then go back round to the driver's side, try the key in the ignition. If the vehicle starts up and runs, you know that it is just the coin battery in your key that has gone flat, so that's easy to replace, and there's a video on the channel to learn how to do that. If you find it's still not starting, then that has identified that it's the 12 volt battery under the bonnet which has gone flat. So next you just need to open the bonnet by releasing the catch down there. You then unlock your bonnet by putting your fingers under the raised bonnet here and sliding the catch that way, like that. And then here is your 12 volt battery and electric vehicles are no different to a combustion engine vehicle. They're completely reliant on that 12 volt battery for unlocking the vehicle and starting the vehicle. So what a lot of EV owners assume is at this point they can get their charging cable and charge the vehicle and that will then charge the 12 volt battery however it doesn't work like that if your 12 volt battery is dead the charging system isn't going to switch on so you can't charge your vehicle none of it's going to work until that 12 volt battery is working so next i'll go through the options you've got to get your 12 volt battery charged and get your vehicle running again but the obvious solution is just to go and put a new 12 volt battery in and actually that's something you'll probably end up doing anyway if your 12 volt battery is flat even though you might get this jump started or charged up usually with these lead acid batteries if they've allowed to be drained completely flat when they've charged up they don't recover very well and you tend to find that once a battery has been utterly drained it's always going to then cause you problems so ultimately if you've got a 12 volt battery issue you're probably going to be changing that at some point soon anyway because it's repeatedly probably going to give you issues. So the first solution is to whip this battery out and put in a brand new 12 volt battery and I've got a video on the channel if it's not released yet it will be released very soon so I'll put a link in the top of the screen and in the video description below which will show you how you remove this battery and put in a new one and what replacement batteries you can buy for this vehicle. The second option is to use some jump leads and jump your vehicle from another vehicle whether that's another combustion engine vehicle or an electric vehicle. So you would connect the other end of the jump leads to the uh, donor vehicle and then connect the positive up not easy actually with these jump leads but anyway the positive on the positive and then your negative on the negative post and then the donor vehicle on the other end of these cables uh, if it was let's say a combustion engine vehicle which is most likely that will be the case you can leave that running because the alternator in the donor vehicle is then going to be charging this battery but you must not try to start your vehicle here leave the ignition turned off and just leave the combustion engine vehicle running for three or four minutes which in turn then is going to charge this battery so the longer you can leave the combustion engine vehicle running and the longer this is charging the better but after three or four minutes you're probably going to want to try this to see if it's going to start at that point you want to turn the engine off on the donor vehicle 
but leaving the jump leads connected. So at that point, the donor vehicle isn't charging this, but you've got the two 12 volt batteries joined up together. And then you can then jump in and turn the ignition and see if this starts. And once it starts, disconnect your jump leads because at that point, the traction battery in this vehicle is then charging the 12 volt battery. But what you don't want is the donor vehicle charging this and then this vehicle charging its battery. But if the jump leads are connected and the donor vehicle is switched off, that's perfectly fine because the charging circuit in here is gonna to try to charge this and the donor vehicle until you disconnect the jump leads. So that will most likely get you running, but the longer you can leave this connected to the donor vehicle the better because that's going to charge it up for longer but as soon as you've got your vehicle running then it's going to charge the battery while you're driving however if you've got a very short drive less than let's say let's say an hour it's unlikely going to charge a 12 volt battery enough so it's probably going to cause you problems the next morning just because that isn't charged long enough but anyway as soon as that's got above about 10 volts in it the charging system will work it can drive it can get you to work or get you to your place of work and go about your normal business but if this is low you want to make sure this is charged up so what i would recommend if it's safe to do so leave your kangoo running because while it's in ready mode and it's got the go light on the dash you can leave it running, the traction battery will charge the 12 volt battery and leave it running for an hour or two if it's safe to do that because then that will ensure this is properly charged up and it won't catch you out later on in the day. So the next option is to use a mains battery charger and ultimately this is going to be the best solution because you're going to properly charge that 12 volt battery to its full capacity and it's less likely going to catch you out later in the day unless of course your battery is permanently damaged and you're going to need to replace it. So when looking at battery chargers you have a traditional old-fashioned battery charger or you have these new type called smart chargers which uh, is a sort of maintenance charger or a trickle charger and these are much better these will recover an old battery um, and they sort of cycle it and you can leave these connected for as long as you like and they will do some good to your battery so these are two models that I highly recommend um, I've got links to these in the video description below but if you want a cheap and cheerful battery tester without spending much money then I can highly recommend this Maypole one. I've got a video about this on the channel if you want to know more about these but the advantage of this is it's got a display on there so that will tell you the battery voltage when you connect up to your battery and it will give you some idea of what's going on. So first off I'll just show you um, how you charge your battery with this unit. So when you're charging your 12 volt battery you want to make sure that your vehicle is switched off and your keys are out of the ignition basically and if you're charging it anything over let's say two amps in this case it's a four amp charger what you really want to do is disconnect the vehicle from the battery so what you need is a 10 volt um, sorry 10 millimeter um, socket ideally and you'll get onto that nut on the back of the uh, negative terminal here and undo that and then we're going to take this negative terminal off the battery like that you want to be a bit careful if your vehicle has the alarm fitted from the factory because you have this very thin wire here and often those do break from the spade connection on the end and it does also mean you can't pull this terminal away and hook it down the side so they are a bit more difficult to hook out the way but anyway with that out of the way you can then connect up your battery charger so put the positive on and the negative on and as soon as I put that on there it's going to show me the voltage of the battery and in this case this battery is 11.9 volts so that's fine but now it is charging so it's cho showing us the charging voltage so just so you know these are called 12 volt batteries and their normal voltage is about 12 and a half volts 
and then when the vehicle itself through the DC to DC converter which is the EV equivalent of an alternator in a nice vehicle when that is charging the battery it's delivering 14 and a half volts to charge it so that's what this charger is going to do at the moment it's giving it 12.2 volts and that's why I say these are a smart charger because it ramps the voltage up gently and it also cycles the battery and uh, it properly maintains it and it's not just sort of delivering 14 and a half volts constantly it's doing uh, some sort of charging intelligence here to get the best out of this battery so this will slowly ramp up to 13 and a half or to 14 and a half volts and when it's properly charged the battery it will all turn green to show you that, that this is now ready so depending on how flat your battery is um, this is going to take a day and a night probably um, so you, this sort of solution isn't going to be your quick um, charge to get you going in the morning you're going to want to use jump leads off another vehicle for that but if you're not in any rush then putting your vehicle or putting your battery on a battery charger and leaving it for a day and a night or so is going to properly charge that battery and uh, be the most reliable solution so when this is finished, let's say now we're the next morning and your battery is charged up, then you can disconnect your terminals, turn this unit off, and then put your negative terminal back on and do that clamp back up. It may spark when you put it back on, that's normal. Um, but from that point then you can go inside the cabin, turn the ignition on and your vehicle will then start. And as I said, when it's started and running, the vehicle will charge the 12 volt battery and when that 12 volt battery is charged you can then also put the vehicle on charge through the charging port at the front and when it's charging it also charges the 12 volt as well so once you've done this got your 12 volt up together everything else will then work as it should do so when you're using a battery charger anything more than about uh, 2 amp and nearly all of them are then you really want to disconnect that negative lead to disconnect the battery from the vehicle However, there's another battery charger here, which again, I highly recommend. These are more money. There are no Co-Genius 1, and these are only 1 amp, so a very low amperage charger. These again are smart. They have various charging cycles, which um, will charge your battery nicely and also maintain it. And because it is a battery maintenance charger or a trickle charger, you can leave these connected for as long as you like. Days, months, it really doesn't matter. The longer, the better, because it properly maintains your 12 volt battery but the advantage of these ones because they are low amperage you can connect this up to the vehicle so yeah connect it up to the battery while the battery is still connected to the vehicle and they will not do any damage so we can connect that up there the negative terminal still connect to the vehicle and we can connect that up there and now that is charging can't see here but that light's gone red it's a bit um difficult to see in daylight but that is now charging the battery and because it's a low amperage if we then accidentally go and turn the vehicle on while this is still connected and charging it doesn't cause any damage to the vehicle it doesn't cause any damage to the ECUs and even though the vehicle's own charging system will kick in it can happily run in parallel with this because this is a very low amperage whereas if you use a higher amperage battery charger and then you were to accidentally turn the vehicle on while it was still connecting it can cause issues i've seen vehicles have issues because of that whereas using these one amp ones it's 100 percent safe but charging at one amp it does mean that that battery will take longer and these are quite big batteries on the Kangoo so if this battery is completely flat it might take two days and a night or two nights and a day or whatever um, it can take a longer time but the advantage of these low amperage ones is they're just easy you can connect up walk away and if you've got a low mileage vehicle where often with low mileage vehicles you're not driving the vehicle long enough for the battery to charge because your driving sessions are quite short then having one of these NOCO 1 amp chargers are a very handy things to have because when you get home you can just connect this up and maintain uh, sorry charge your battery throughout the week or certainly when you're not using your van if you're going to not use the van for a period of time a week or a weekend or whatever whack it on this this will bring the battery up to its full state of charge 
and it's nice and easy just with crocodile clips you don't have to disconnect the terminal and it will not cause any damage to the vehicle while that battery is still connected i use these things um, on all our vehicles when they sit here uh, we've got about uh, 25 of these and uh, they're just brilliant devices they're slow they're only one amp but they just work and uh, they also charge agm batteries lithium um, i've got a feeling they might do do they do six volt yeah they also do uh, six volt batteries as well um, but you can press the mode button here and select between the type you want on the kangoo it's a standard lead acid so it's the first option which that one there is lit but if it's an agm you would press mode and you would go to the second option here which is 12 volt agm uh, but the kangoo you want it on the first option but basically you just plug it in and go and it defaults to the first standard lead acid 12 volt battery option but these things are quite expensive they're um, about 35 quid or so anyway I'll put a link to these um, to these on Amazon in the video description below um, but these ones are cheaper and have the advantage that they got the screen so you can see the voltage um, so if you want something that's sort of just basic then these are great as well but do disconnect the negative lead before you use anything more than four amp or above so there you go I've shown you the three options first one is to replace the battery completely second is to jump it from another vehicle and third is to use a mains operated battery charger and uh, charge your battery but either way you've got to get that battery to 100 percent charged for the vehicle to work properly if this battery is below uh it's about 10 volt anything below 10 volts it starts causing you problems and it will not start but really you don't want to go below let's say 11 volts but i think on the kangoos i think they will start they will be okay and will start if it's above 10 volts but um as always if your battery is low you want to make sure that's properly charged otherwise that's going to continue causing you issues so i hope that helps if it has as always please do click the thumbs up button on youtube that really does help do subscribe and if you want to know more about the kangoo electric van i've put a link in the video description below where you can go to a playlist and you can look at all the other videos i've made about these vans and more videos are being added all the time okay doke that's it and i'll see you on the next video